The Trump administration is canceling studies about ways to improve vaccine trust and access. It's a move that comes in the midst of a large measles outbreak in the U.S. that's fueled by unvaccinated children. Researchers with the grants from the National Institutes of Health are getting letters canceling some of their projects. Many of these projects are associated with other research happening here and around the world. Joining us now is virologist Jason Kindrichuk. Good morning, Jason. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Now, what research projects are you working on right now that might be impacted by these changes happening in the U.S.? You know, we, we've been very fortunate so far in that a lot of the work that we've been doing has not actually been impacted yet, which which is great. Um, but, but of course, you know, we, we never want to, uh, you know, kind of look a gift horse in the mouth either, so to speak. Um, you know, we, a lot of the international work we're doing is is clearly connected to uh, to ongoing uh, outbreak response, uh, emerging infectious disease response of, of all varieties. Um, so, you know, any loss in coverage, certainly of antivirals for HIV or, uh, or you know, uh, assistance for things like malaria, uh, for Ebola coverage, um, you know, we, all those things have a, have a direct impact uh, uh, on our MPOX uh, programs because the fact is that then we have to pull resources from other areas to be able to, be able to cover those. So I think for now we've, we've been okay from the MPOX front in not looking at, at losses in, in, in funding, um, but at the same time, I think we're concerned about what the repercussions are going to be, uh, you know, a few days or a few weeks from now, let alone, uh, you know, months and, and years down the road. I know you do a lot of work with MPOX right now, but are you concerned with the measles outbreak happening in the U.S. Yep. and some yeah, spots yeah. here in Canada? Uh, well, obviously, right? I, I, listen, I posted about it yesterday in, in you know, maybe kind of a, kind of a, a somewhat sarcastic fashion, but but the reality is, is listen, what, one of the, certainly the biggest national security threats uh, looming in, in the U.S. And, and probably as well uh, Canada, given what we're seeing, uh, you know, in, in loss of vaccine coverage is really protection from vaccine preventable diseases. That's something that, you know, we haven't had to face for a long period of time, especially when you think about where measles had been uh, when, when it had been practically eliminated. Um, you know, I think the the unfortunate reality for us now is we're seeing a surge in things that we've always been able to to protect, at least in certainly in my lifetime. Um, now we have to combat that uh, and, and those diseases while we also have surges in things like avian influenza. So I, I think the reality is, is that we need to do a better job in getting out to communities, trying to get in front of this, ensuring that people have access to good information, have access to vaccines, um, and uh, and also feel that, hmm. that there's a transparency and, and uh, a respectful nature and the dialogue um, I think it's one of the things that you know came out of COVID that uh, that we all appreciated was you know the information has to be palatable for for each individual community that that's being targeted okay let's go back to avian flu now we know that it's spreading in the U.S. as well and there's evidence yeah. now showing that it's even spreading easily to mammals including dairy cows tell us what the potential danger is here and how likely is it to spread to Canada yeah, listen, we, we've been following avian influenza for, you know, 30 years, for, for H5N1 specifically. Um, you know, the, what we saw in, in 2023, well, 2024, I should say, with, with the surge of, of cases in dairy cattle, uh, well, was quite novel for us because of the fact that we hadn't seen it expand uh, and, and circulate that broadly uh, amongst a mammalian species like that. So for us, the concern was, as we always have with, with flu, is that the ongoing circulation uh, usually leads to accumulation of mutations uh, within the, the, the genome or the new, the kind of the, the basically the, the backbone material, the genetic material of that virus. Um, those uh, mutations tend to be quite random and sometimes they can uh, increase the ability of that virus to, to move more freely. So, uh, so far for us, for Canada, very low impact. We haven't seen it in dairy cattle. Some great work by a postdoc of mine, Dr. Hannah Wallace, has been looking at antibodies in commercial milk. We haven't seen any signs of prior infections so far. That's great, we've done a good job, but we have to appreciate the, expand, the continued expansion of that virus uh, within dairy cattle and as well, obviously, with, with another species, uh, continues to pose a, an increasing threat, especially if we don't have that surveillance coverage to be able to continue to monitor where it's going. And I think right. that's a big piece. Okay. And while it's been five years since the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a world health issue, the U.S. is no longer part of the WHO. What is the worry with this concerning uh, future pandemics? 
Well, you know, we, I mean, when we when we talk about the the U.S. not being part of WHO, I mean, one of the things we we do have to qualify is that certainly for for U.S. government organizations, they're not part. I still have uh, uh, U.S. colleagues that that are participating on working groups, technical advisory groups that, that I sit on, whether it's MPOX or or other emerging viruses. Um, we need to continue to have those folks there. They, these are people that are experts in the field, absolute, uh, uh, you know, kind of top uh, global experts. Um, the loss of the coverage of folks, though, from the U.S. government, people like. Yeah, uh, those that work at CDC or FDA or otherwise um, removes our ability to be able to move information very rapidly to those folks and, and ensure that the people that are in charge of policy, in charge of uh, uh, making very quick decisions on what to do at, at a national level or a federal level, they don't have that, that information coming in. They're now waiting to try and find out after the fact. Okay, Jason, any uh, quickly, we're almost out of time, any messages for Manitobans uh, over the next couple of weeks? Uh, the big thing is, you know, I think we're all just trying to, you know, kind of stay the course right now and and be be good, strong, uh, strong Canadians. I think the big thing is, listen, we're we're coming into springtime, uh, but it doesn't mean an end to to infectious disease season, uh, especially with with things like measles. Uh, you know, please make sure that kids uh, are up to date on their measles vaccines, uh, and certainly for for illnesses. Again, if if you're sick and symptomatic, just simply try and stay home and, okay. and limit your contacts. Jason, thanks again for your time today.